Hi friends, welcome to Tim Python series. In this video, we're going to talk about how to use Jinja templates for server side rendering in a Flask server. So in this post, we're going to cover the following topics using if, elif and else in Jinja template, using the inline if statement in Jinja template, how to check if a variable is defined in a Jinja template and using the for loop in a Jinja template and accessing the for loop iterator inside a Jinja for loop and creating a sequence of numbers in a Jinja template using the range function and some of the filters like count, join, round, int, upper, escape, etc. So before starting to demonstrate the Jinja templates, let's try to create a server that can serve a basic Jinja template. So I'm going to go ahead and open a blank folder and open this with VS code. Let's create a server Python file. I'll just write server.py and now let's create a basic Flask server. For that, I'm going to import the Flask class from the Flask module, create a Flask instance make the server listen at a host and a port so i have mentioned the host as 0.0.0, .0 so i can run my server at localhost i have mentioned the port as 5000 and i am saying debug equal to true so that i can see the errors easily now let's create a root in our server so that we can serve jinja templates so i let a definition here def index and i'll just return hello world here and i'll make this root using the root decorator app.root and this will listen at the home page so i have written slash so I got a root which acts as a home page and returns just hello world. So let me try to save it and run this and check whether our setup is working. So now the server has started and in my browser I'll just create a new tab and write localhost 500 and hello world is printed out. Now instead of sending hello world let's try to render a template. So to render a template I'll just create a new folder and I'll write templates. And in this templates folder I'll just create a new file I'll just name it index dot html dot j2 so this is my simple jinja template and this is just simple html i have not used jinja templating in this till now but a html file is also a valid jinja template so let me try to serve this file from my server.py so instead of returning a string called hello world i'll import one more function from flask called render template and i'll use the render template function to return the template file so i'll just write render template of index dot html dot j2 so this is the name of the template file inside the templates folder so i'll just save it and after the server is reloaded i'll just open the browser and reload it here and you can see hello from jinja template so we have successfully rendered our template also so now let's see what are the jinja templating examples and scenarios we can see so the first scenario is using if else and elif in a jinja template so it's basically writing if blocks in your jinja templating so to demonstrate this example, I am injecting an object called user in my Jinja template. So let's try to go ahead and do that. I'll just copy this and in my render template, I will inject a variable called user and it has two attributes, name and age. Name is ABCD, age is 52. So now using this user object, I'm going to demonstrate the if condition in a Jinja template. And using if condition, I want to render whether the user is young, old or not young. So if the user is less than 30 years, I will print it as young. If the user is older than 50 years, I will print him as old. And if the user is between 30 and 50 years, I will print him as not young. So let's try to do that in this example. I'm going to print the whole thing in the h2 tag. So I will create a new line in this h2 tag and write the if condition here. For writing the if condition, you have to use this flower bracket percentage. And between these two flower bracket percentage, you have to write the if. So I'll write if and the variable name was user, right? User dot age less than or equal to 30 it's just like writing if condition in python and here inside this if block you can write the user is young and you have to end the if statement right so you can end the if, if statement using this floor bracket percentage and between the percentage floor bracket you have to write end if and this is just a if block in jinja templating so instead of writing the user is young you can write the user name also since we have the user object so i just render the user name here user dot name so this is how you can write an if statement so if you want to write an else statement in this or else if I want to write an else if statement, create an another flower bracket percentage block and write L if. So it's basically else if just like Python and I'm writing L if user dot age greater than or equal to 50, then I can write user is old. So I'll just write control C, control V user is old. Now I'll write an else that means user is between 30 and 50. So to write else, I'll write a flower bracket percentage and between those two i'll write else so this is the start of an else block and here i'm going to write user is not young so i'll just write user is not young and that's it this is how you can create an if elif else statement in a jinja template 
So let me try to save this and let me try to save a server also so that I can see the changes in my output and let me try to reload my template and here you can see ABCD is old. This is because the username is ABCD and the age is 52. Since 52 is greater than 50, it is showing the age is old. If I write something like 28 and save it, you should see that the ABCD is young because it's less than 30. And if I write the something age like 40, which is between 30 and 50, you have to see ABCD is not young because it's between 30 and 50 and it is hitting this else statement. So that's it guys, that is how you can use if, else, elif in Jinja templates. And there is one more cleaner way to write simple if statements in Jinja template using the inline if else statement. It's just like Python only. So let's try to do that now. So if you want to write this whole thing in a single line, it's possible using inline if statement. So let me try to create a new line here and say the user is and in this flower brackets, you can write old if user dot age greater than or equal to 50 else young if user dot age less than or equal to 30 and else you can say not young so basically here i'm doing nested if conditions to perform hierarchical condition checking that means you can even write something like old if user age is greater than 50 else young that's all but if you want to nest another if statement inside this else statement then you can write young if user is less than 30 else not young so this is a sub condition inside this main condition so this way using inline if conditions you can easily write simple if else statements in a single line so let's try to remove this previous example and see the user is old if age greater than 50 else young if age greater than 30 else not young so instead of writing the user you can even render the user name here so i can write user dot name let me try to save this template file save this server file so that my output is refreshed in the browser so i'll just reload my browser now and here you can see abcd is not young so if i change the age to something like 28 and save it and run this you can see abcd is young that means our inline if else condition is working all right that was about inline if else statement in jinja template so the next important thing is checking if the variable is defined in a jinja template so how can you check that it's really simple you can use statement like user is defined if user is defined you will get this as true and user is not defined you will get it as false so let's try to do that here so let's remove this previous statement and inside two flower brackets i'm going to render user is defined and save it and if i just reload the output you can see true that means using something like user is defined or some variable is defined you can check if the variable is defined or not and this can be used inside an if condition to activate code only if the user variable is defined so let's try to do that now so i'll just create a if condition here using this floor bracket and i'll write if user is defined i'll just write user is defined and if not i'll just write user is not defined and i'm gonna end my if statement so if i just save it and save the server file so that i can get the updated changes in the browser and if i just reload the browser you can see user is defined so by using this is defined operator on a variable i can check if that variable is actually defined in the jinja template or not so this is really important if you are using the variable in your jinja templating suppose you are writing user dot name and if user itself is not present then you will get jinja templating errors to avoid errors like that you can do some sanity checking using this is defined operator on your variables the next important thing in jinja templates is using the for loop so if you have a list of objects and you want to render them as a list in your HTML file, you can use for loop. So for this example, instead of rendering a single object, I will render a list of objects, something like this. So I'll just copy this here and paste it in my server file. So here, instead of rendering a variable called user, I'm rendering a variable called users, which is a list of objects. And now let's try to use a for loop to render a list of users. So for loop can be written using this flower bracket percentage. And inside this, you can write for u in users just like python for loop and a for loop should be ended with end for between this flower bracket percentage so let's write end for so now inside this for loop you will get access to the variable called u for each iteration which is each object inside this user list so you can render the username something like u dot name and let's try to save this let's try to reload our output and here you can see each username being rendered in the output so if you want to make it like a simple html list it's also very easy in my template i'll just create a unordered list something like that i have defined the unordered list here and inside this unordered list i have to render each list item right so i'll just serve this u.name with a list item tag so that's it inside an unordered list 
I'm rendering each list item as a list item tag. So I'll just save it and save the server.py again. And if I just reload this, you can see I got the order list because I've got the OL tag here. So if I want another list, I have to write the UL tag here. So save it again and reload this. And you can see the each user item being rendered as a list item. You can even show the age of each item because I have access to u.age and save it and reload my browser and you can see name comma age. So this way using for loop in Jinja templates, you can iterate over server variables and do your rendering in your desired way. In our case, I've rendered each user item inside an unordered list using this ul and li tag along with Jinja for loop. So the next topic is accessing the for loop iterator inside the Jinja for loop using the loop.index0 or loop.index. So if you have a problem statement, something like you have to print the name, age and even the serial number of the user. So how can you get access to that variable? Because you have the user object, but not the sequence of the user in this users list. So a very handy way to do that is by using the special variable called loop inside the for loop. So here I'm using the loop variable dot index zero. So here inside the for loop, I'm rendering a variable called loop dot index zero. And loop is a special variable which will be updated for each iteration of the for loop. So loop.index0 will give the zero ordered sequence inside the for loop. So let's save it and reload the output. Here you can see 0, 1, 2, 3. If you want the loop index to be starting from 1, instead of using loop.index0, you can write loop.index and save it and reload it. And here you can see the iterator of the for loop for each user item being displayed in the list. The next scenario is using the range function to create a sequence of numbers in a Jinja template. So here in this example, I've used range of six, just like Python to get a sequence from one to five. So range function in Jinja templates is just like the range function in Python. So let's try to demonstrate this example. Let's try to use the range to create a sequence of numbers using a for loop. So I'll just create a for loop here for i in range of one to nine. So using range of one to nine, just like in Python, I'll get numbers from one to eight, right? So I'll just start at a for loop and I'll end the for loop using end for. And let's try to print the variable i in this for loop. And let's try to create a comma. So let's try to save this now and reload our output. And here you can see each number being displayed. So this way using the range function, just like in Python, you can create sequence of numbers inside your Jinja templates. Now let's talk about filters in Jinja templates. Filters in Jinja templates are just like functions in Python. Suppose you have a string and you want to make it an uppercase. In Python, you write upper of x. But in Jinja, we have to write x pi upper. Just like in Linux shell scripts, you have to pass the variable using a pipe into the function. But if you have to round a number to two decimals, in Python you'll write round of x comma two. But in Jinja, you'll write x round of two. So by piping x into this function round of two, x will be passed as the first argument, something like round of x comma two. So this is the syntax of using filters in Jinja templates. So let's try to see the examples of how we can use filters in Jinja templates. The first example is the count filter. It's just like you can get the count of items in iterable. So in our example, we are rendering a list of objects called users. So in our example, we are rendering a list of items using the users object. Users is a list object, right? So you can get the count of a list object inside this Jinja template using users and piping it into the count function. Let's try to write some text behind also. So I'll just write the number of users is and now let's try to reload our output and you can see the number of users is four so this way using the count inbuilt jinja filter you can get the number of items in a list object very easily the next important inbuilt filter is a join filter using a join filter you can combine list of objects into a single string so here i'm showing two examples one example is using the join on each object itself and the second example is using join on each attribute of the object so let's try to see the join filter in action so here inside the rendering brackets I can write users and pass it into a join function and in the join function I can write a comma. So what this does is it will join all the user objects with a comma but I don't want to join all the user objects I just want to join the name of each user. So for that you can give a special input called attribute equal to name. So what I'm telling is join all the user objects but join them on an attribute called name. So what this does is that it will extract the name from each user object and joins them with a comma. So let me try to save this and reload the output and here you can see each user name is joined using a comma. This was a case where I want to join each attribute of an object but if you want to join each string or each number then also it's easy you can just write join and instead of users let me try to give a list of numbers so we can create a list of numbers using the range function right so I'll just write range of 1 to 11 so basically I'm creating numbers from 1 to 10 and joining them with a comma so let me just save this and run this and you can see 
1 to 10 numbers being joined with a comma. The next filters we are going to talk about is the round and int filters. So these are very important while rendering. Suppose if your object is having some 5 decimals but you want the output to be rendered as 2 decimals, you can happily use round of 2. Or if your server variable is actually a decimal and you want to treat it as an integer, you can use the int function. All right, let's try to see the round filter first. So inside my rendering brackets, I'll write 45.25 and pipe it into the round function and I'll say 1. So I'm telling round this number to single decimal. So let me try to save it now and reload my output. Here you can see 45.2. But if you want to round it to a ceiling value, you can write round of 1 comma seal so i should get 45.3 so let me reload this and you can see 45.3 so this is how you can use the round to trim the decimals and then let's try to use the int function so that i can convert a decimal to an integer for better output display so let me to save it now and run this you can see 45 so just by piping the variable into the int filter you can remove the decimals from the variable all right let's try to talk about the upper lower title and capitalize and trim filters so the upper filter will make all the characters in the string as uppercase the lower filter will make all the characters in this string as a lowercase and the title filter will make the starting character of each word as a capital letter and the rest will be small letters and the trim filter will trim the white spaces at the starting and the beginning the capitalized filter will make all the characters of the string lowercase and make only the first character as a uppercase so i have copied the code and pasted here and here we are using each of the function upper lower title trim and capitalize so this is how the output looks like so if i pass this string into the upper filter notice that all the characters are uppercase and if i pass the string over the lower filter all the characters are lowercase and if i pass this string into the title case the starting character of each word is uppercase and the rest are lowercase and using the trim function the starting and ending white spaces are trimmed using the capitalize function the whole string will be lowercase and only the first string will be capitalized something like this the next important filter we're going to talk about is the escape filter. So escape filter will perform HTML escaping over the string while rendering in your Jinja templates. Let me try to show you the power of escape filter in action using this example. So in this example, I'm rendering a string and the string is basically a script tag and I'm creating a variable called X inside this script tag. So basically I'm injecting JavaScript in my HTML template. So let me save it and reload my output. And if I go to the developer tools and see the HTML, you can see I've got a script tag and my variable called X declared in this script tag. So if I go to the console and write X, you can see I've got a variable called injection risk declared in my HTML document. In many cases, this is not desired because if you want to display some database entries and the database entry is malicious with some script inside it, this can hamper the user experience. So the simple solution is basically pass this string into the escape filter. So what escape filter does is that it will convert these special characters and perform HTML encoding on those. So if I just save it and reload my output, you can see I've got script var equal to injection risk, which is visible now. And if I go to the inspector and see the raw HTML that is being rendered from the server, you can see the greater than and less than symbols are being HTML encoded. And if I go to my console and write X, you can see X is not defined. So this way using the HTML escaping on a string using this escape filter, you can minimize your script injection risk while rendering your Jinja templates. So that's it guys. In this post, we have learned some of the important Jinja templating techniques so that you can perform flash server side rendering. You can see I've created a blog post on this topic and I've also given you the source code and Jinja templates so that you can copy paste and practice it in your own computer. So please be sure to check out the link of this blog post in the description of this video. And if you don't know what Flask is about or you don't know anything about the basics of Flask, I've also created videos and plays on Flask. So be sure to check out that link in the description. I've also given you some references for further reading. I also insist you to see the Jinja 2 official documentation. This is a very great documentation on how to use Jinja templating and you can learn a lot from this documentation. So check out the official Jinja 2 documentation also in the references section. Please ask any questions or post your valuable feedback in the comment section. Hope you like this video guys. Thank you for watching.